the Jack Benny program. <laughs> Starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, 1949 is gone and forgotten. But to Jack Benny, 1950 will always be remembered. Because 1950 is what he paid for his new suit. And here he is, Jack Benny! Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, I want to ask you something. How did you know that I bought a new suit? I heard it on Vera Pusa. <laughs> What? Wait a minute. I want to hear this. You heard it? You heard it on what? I heard it on Drew Pearson's broadcast. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he got the award for being the best announcer in the world. That gives you a rough idea. Dr. Gallup must have given it to you. Now, wait a minute, Don. Drew Grierson, or Drew, Drew Pearson is a commentator who specializes in national affairs. Why would he mention that I bought a suit for $19.50? Because Wall Street feels that it indicates a definite trend toward a bull market. <laughs> yeah, I can't understand it. A man goes out and buys a plain herringbone suit and it shakes the economic system of the nation. I need wool socks, too, but who knows what it'll do to England? <laughs> All right, kids, let's not waste any more time. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, we bring you that melodramatic mystery entitled Murder at Romanov. Our play opens in the private office of Captain O'Benny of the Beverly Hills Police. Curtain music. <laughs> now, listen, men. There have been a lot of complaints. We're going to straighten things up around here. You first, Officer O'Day. What'd I do now? Yesterday, I sent you out in a simple assignment. All you had to do was look for cars parked next to fire hydrants and give out traffic tickets. Well, I did. O'Day, how many times must I tell you? Put the tickets on the cars, not the hydrants. <laughs> and you, O. Wilson, you haven't been attending to your duties either. I'm sorry, sir. Being sorry doesn't help. Remember, you're the only man on the police force who's a condemned murderer. Say, Chief, how come we have a murderer working with us? Well, on the day of his execution, he started ordering his last meal, and the state couldn't afford it. <laughs> but I'm really disgusted with you, man. Why, we even have our bloodhound, Prince, is smarter than you. Come here, Prince. Here, Prince. <laughs> Prince, how much is one and two? Two! 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 That's right. Now, what's six minus four? Two! Two! Right again, Prince. Now, what is the square root of 73,429? Put down that pencil and figure it out in your head. <laughs> Stupid dog. <laughs> now, men, today I want... Hello, Beverly Hills Police, Captain O'Benny speaking. Hello, Captain, this is Mitzi LaRue. Mitzi LaRue? Mitzi LaRue. Hello, Mitzi, how do you do? Put down those drums. <laughs> Never should have given them to him for Christmas. Now, what is it, Miss LaRue? Well, Captain, I'm the cigarette girl at Romanoff's restaurant. Yeah. I want to report that a man named Carlton Quince was murdered here two hours ago. Two hours ago? Yes. <laughs> what was that, another murder? No, the same one. What? We had to transcribe for release at this more convenient time. <laughs> Okay, man, this is Romanoff's restaurant. That man in that red uniform and gold braid must be the doorman. I'll ask him. Pardon me, are you the doorman? Well, who do you think I am, Drear Poussin? Now, stand 
outside and let me in. Hey, Chief, this place is sure crowded with celebrities. Yeah, Drew, you mean you search the premises. Now, I'm going to question some of these people. I think a little short guy over there is the owner of the place. Well, tell me, Prince Romanoff, what do you know about this murder? Murder? Has there been a murder here? Yes, your cigarette girl called me and told me about it. Well, here she comes now, Oscar. Tell me, Mitzi, have we had a murder today? Yes. <laughs> Carlton Quince was quilled. Quilled? <laughs> Room, there's been a murder ah, committed. Don't raise your voice, Chief. You remember, this is the classiest joint in town. Some class. Look at that broom leaning against the table. <laughs> well, that's no broom. That's Frank Sinatra. Well, I'm going over and talk to him. Say, you. Are you Frank Sinatra? Won't you tell me when we will meet again Sunday, Monday? Now, listen, Sinatra, what were you doing at the time of the murder? I was eating lunch. A likely story. What did you have? A raisin. <laughs> One raisin for lunch? Boy, am I stuffed. <laughs> Never mind. I want to know... Say, Captain O'Benny, that's a beautiful new suit you're wearing. Cost 1950, didn't it? Yes, how did you know? Last Friday, I sang Don't Cry Joe. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, tell me, Frank, what do you know about the murder of Carlton Quince? Well, personally, I think Romanoff did it. Oh, you do? Well, I'll call him back again. Oh, Prince! <laughs> <laughs> Not you, you stupid dog! <laughs> put down that pencil. If you haven't figured it out yet, forget it. <laughs> Prince Michael, come here. Yes, Captain O'Benny. Sinatra thinks you're the man who murdered... Captain O'Benny, Captain O'Benny. What is it, O'Day? Would you think a man is guilty if you saw him running around with a smoking gun in one hand, a bloodstained knife in the other, and he kept yelling, I did it! I did it! I did it! <laughs> I did it! Well, of course that man is guilty. Well, if I see anyone like that, I'll arrest him. <laughs> good, good. Tell me, Captain O'Benny, who is this peasant? I'm... I'm Officer O'Day. Who are you? I am His Imperial Highness, Prince Michael Romanoff. Well, how do you do? <laughs> Cut that out, O'Day. I want to finish questioning Sinatra. Where did he go? Here I am, Captain O'Benny. You've got to do something about this dog of yours. <laughs> what about the dog? He keeps taking me out in the yard and burying me over <laughs> Ah, oh, come on now, doggy. Put me down. Yeah, put Frankie down. Stop beating his head against the floor. <laughs> you teach a dog drums and he goes crazy. <laughs> All right, miss. I'm Captain O'Benny. What's your name? Rosalind Russell. Rosalind Russell! Now, just a minute, Miss Russell. Where were you when Carlton Quince was murdered? I was in the theater watching my new Columbia picture, Tell It to the Judge. And by the way, congratulations on your new suit. How did you know? It was in the newsreel. <laughs> well, say, that's a nice dress you're wearing. It's taffeta, isn't it? Yes, yes, it is taffeta. Would you mind getting up and walking around a bit? Walk around? Why? I always wanted to hear Rosalind Russell. <laughs> I just had my lunch. Now, Miss Russell, what do you know about this murder? Nothing, nothing. Why don't you ask Gene Kelly over there? Gene Kelly? Oh, yes. I'll go over and talk to him. <laughs> You're Gene Kelly, aren't you? Now, come on, Kelly, talk. This is radio, not television. Okay, okay, I'll talk, I'll talk. I thought you would. Now, come clean, Kelly. Why did you kill Carlton Quinn? I didn't do it. It was Mitzi LaRue. I didn't do it. It was Mike Romanoff. I didn't do it. It was Rosalind Russell. I didn't do it. Wait, Frankie, I haven't accused you yet. 
What's going on here anyway? Now, look, somebody in this room murdered Carlton Quince, and I'm going to find out who. I beg your pardon, but I have to go now. Huh? Who are you? Carlton Quince. <laughs> Carlton Quince? Why, you're the murdered man. I know, but I have to go to rehearsal. They're killing me again tonight on The Whistler. <laughs> The Jack Benny Program is written by Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsberg, George Balzer, John Tackerberry, Al Gordon, Hal Goldman, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Mark.